shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. That means that there's enough trouble today that we don't have to worry about tomorrow. <laughs> I, I wish I could get a witness right there because I know that I know that I know we have trouble every day. And the Bible said not to worry. Well, thank you, Lord, for the day will take care of itself. But this is the Sermon on the Mount. This is one of the greatest sermons that was ever preached in the history of the world. This is when Jesus Christ walked the earth and he stood upon the mount and, and the Bible said there were people that were gathered all around and Jesus would just begin to speak. And every time that Jesus would open up his mouth, the words of heaven would come out. Amen. I don't know about you today, but I pray that we as his children are that way that when we open up our mouth instead of worry coming out, instead of panic, instead of negativity, that the word from heaven will begin to flow from our lips. And the Bible said that what we put in, it will come out. So we have to know that. If we want to be like Jesus, then we got to start putting the word of God inside <coughs> of every one of our hearts. I told the church last night on the video that, <laughs> oh glory, there's a lot of people that they're Googling everything. <laughs> they're even Googling where's the toilet paper at. <laughs> There's people stealing toilet paper out of bathrooms that people can't even put toilet paper. I don't know why everybody's buying up toilet paper for it. Ah, well, I'm going to get off of that. But anyways, they're, they're Googling this and they're Googling that. They want to know what this thing is. Where did it come from? And, and what are the effects of it? How do I avoid it? But what we really need to be Googling is has God already said what this stuff is? Has God already said what we can do for it? Has God, oh, yes, he did. We need to Google and put inside of us what thus saith the Lord has to say, not what the news media said. The news media will lie to you. They'll deceive you. They'll make facts or they'll make fear. And, and oh, goodness, they'll call them facts, but it's actually fear. I want you to know you can trust every word that comes out of the Holy Bible, every single dot, every single T, every Every single X, every single letter, you can trust and put your hope and your faith in it. And the Bible said that not one word of God will ever hit the ground without accomplishing what it's sent to do. I want you to know you don't have to Google anything. All you have to do is get in this holy book right here and you let the peace of God overflow you. But God showed me just a couple things in this passage of scriptures right here. There's five reasons why we should not worry. I want to share them with you and then we'll close today. There's five reasons why we should not worry. Why? Oh, thank you, Lord. First of all, because worry is worthless. Yes. Worry is worthless. God says we should never worry. Worry is worthless. Worry is unreasonable. There's no reason to it. That's what unreasonable means. There's no reason to worry. It's unreasonable. Why? <laughs> Too many times we worry about the wrong things. Mm. We worry and keep ourselves up at night over small things. I'm not saying this is a small thing. <laughs> oh, but it is when you look at our God. <laughs> it is when you look at our God. It's nothing to him. All God has to do is speak one word, and that stuff will go. One word from the master, and it will go. Listen, when he got up out of the boat that night, he come out there, and they was trying to do the dance, and they was trying to do everything, and Jesus got up from sleep, and what did he say? Peace be still. And all the men said, who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? Mm, mm, mm. We need one word from the master. But we worry about things. We worry about the wrong things. And we worry about little things that won't amount to anything in a few days, a few weeks, a few years, listen, a few months, you'll look back and say, why did I worry myself to death about that? Why was I so fearful about that? Why did I worry about so much and now it don't amount to a hill of beans? Can, oh, my goodness. 
It don't amount to a human beings. It's unreasonable, church. It's unreasonable. So we as Christians, we have got to, I heard Brother Chris say this the other night, we have got to fix our eyes. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians chapter 4 and 18, I believe it is, it said that what we can see is only temporary, but what we cannot see is eternal. I'm telling you, we can open our eyes, all of you at home, you can open your eyes and you can see that everybody's in chaos. They're in a pandemic. They're in, uh, everything's going crazy. And you can see that. You can go down to Bill and Sons. Oh, there's no milk. Uh, and they're stocking back up. God bless them for having to go through this. I'm not saying nothing bad about Bill and Sons. I love them. Oh, I know they might be watching this video. Amen. We endorse Billings Sons. They're good people. But what I'm saying is this. It's because people have panicked. And they went in. No toilet paper. No milk. No bread. Everything. They, they just, they, their fear is bigger than their faith. Yeah. They're worrying about little things. About little things. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. We also, we worry about things that we cannot change. We worry about things that we cannot change. Oh, here we go. There's really not anything that we, that we as humans can do to control <laughs> what this virus does, is there? Other than pray. Other than seek God's face. Other than humble ourselves and, and turn from our wicked ways and call on the name of the Lord. But there's really nothing as far we can do as to reach out and throw it in the trash and be done with it. And listen, we worry about things that we can't change. And I'm going somewhere with this. It may take me just a few minutes to get there, so just hold on for the ride. I'm going somewhere with this. We worry about things we can't change. If we can change it, then change it. But if we can't, so what? If we can't do it on our own, so what? Listen, I want to let you know today, there's a lot of things in the world that we cannot change. But I want to tell you about somebody who can Amen. His name is Jesus Christ. He is, oh, thank you, Jesus. He is my burden bearer. He is my heavy load shirt. He is a friend when I'm friendless. Hallelujah. He is a father when I'm fatherless. He is everything that we need him to be. And he is the one that I choose to put my hope in. And I hope you do too. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We can fix our eyes upon him. We worry about things that we can't change. We'll never be able to change. But just give it to the one who can. Don't let worry settle in your bodies. I've known some people, they call themselves worry warts. I know. I'm telling you, I used to have bad worrying and anxiety. And then thank God the Lord has delivered me through that through the years. I'm telling you, there's still times that I have to remind myself of who I am and whose I am. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. Because there's times that I'll get bad news and I'll still want to panic. I'll still want to get and worry a little bit. I'm just going to be honest with you. But at that time, I hear the Holy Spirit rising up on the inside saying, Do you not know who you are and who you belong to? You are a son of the Most High God. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. You are God's chosen. You are God's elect. You are God's. Hallelujah. You are his possession. You are the sheep of his pastor. And I want you to know that God's children, they have special privileges. Woo! Yeah. Glory to God. You have special privilege. I'm going to get excited and dance in here. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Don't worry about things that you cannot change. That's unreasonable. Thank you, Lord. But a lot of times we worry about things that's beyond our control because we actually believe, some of us actually believe that worrying about something is actually a form of controlling the situation. I just want to talk to you from the heart right here. A lot of people believe that when you worry about it, that's actually you controlling it. But i got to let you know it's not. 
When you worry about something, you are not controlling anything. It is controlling you. Yes. Yes. Worry. We worry and we think, well, if we think about it, it's just going to somehow turn itself around and get right negative. It don't work like that. I wish it did. But the Bible said don't worry about it. You can't control it. We can't control it. But God can and he will give it to him this morning. The only thing that worry does, worry does is, is it, it, it changes our health. It beats us down. It breaks us down. Ooh, glory to God. It worry is something that when you let worry sit in your mind, I told you I'm going somewhere. Give me just a few more minutes. Amen. When we worry about something, you want to know what it does? It becomes bigger than what it actually is because we allow it to stay in our mind. We allow it to stay in our hearts. We allow it to stay in our bodies. And all of a sudden, I want to tell you what happens. When you worry all the time, your stomach is keeping score. When you worry all the time, your back is keeping score. When you worry all the time, your headaches are keeping score. And it's defecting your health. We take things as little as something that somebody said to us. Mm. I'm going to get back to where I'm going. We take things as little as what somebody has said to us and we let it worry us to death. We let it affect us and we let it sit inside of us and we sit there and we ponder about it and we think, well, everybody, the whole world's against us. Actually, no, they're not. And the person that said whatever you're worrying about probably hadn't even thought anything else about you. They probably didn't mean anything about it to begin with. But we let worry build up and we let worry rest inside of our mind instead of just giving it to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And worry is not controlling the situation. Worry is controlling you. Let me move on down to my next point here this morning. Worry is actually controlling you. Thank you, Jesus. Worry Number one is unreasonable. Number two, worry is unnatural. Did you know that human beings are the only beings in God's universe that worries? Did you know that cows don't worry? Whew, somebody needs to hear this. Cows don't worry. Horses don't worry. Birds don't worry. Dogs don't worry. Cats don't worry. The only beings in God's universe that worries is human beings. And I hear God saying, all my creation trust in my care, except humans. It's unnatural, church. God didn't place it. I've heard people say, well, I was born that way. I was born to worry. I was born to fear. No, you wasn't. God don't create junk. And God does not create accidents. God creates you perfect. But we learn to worry by watching somebody else worry. And it's in a time like this that we see now in our nation and in our world, everybody is worrying. So therefore, it's jumping off of this person onto this person. And, and, and oh, hallelujah, it's jumping here and jumping there. But we need to nip that in the bud, as Barney Five used to say. Nip it in the bud and let the faith in Jesus Christ arise on the inside and let that jump to somebody and let the peace of God rest down like manna from heaven. Amen. Worry don't come from being born that way. Worry is something that is learned. But I got good news for you in here today. And you at home, I want you to hear me. Anything that is learned can be unlearned. Anything that you have picked up along the way, you can drop it off just the same way you picked it up. Babies, do babies worry? Does babies worry? Babies don't worry about anything. Until their parents start worrying. And when their parents start worrying, then they learn how to worry. And then they begin to worry. God didn't make you that way. Matthew 6 and 26, let's read. Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they are? Birds never think, I don't have enough to live on. Birds never don't just sit there and worry, am I going to have something to eat? No, they just go and get it. 
They just do. And when we worry, we are not doing nothing but stewing and not doing. Can some oh hallelujah. I wish there's a hundred thousand people in here to hear this message this morning. I pray there's a hundred thousand people that hears it. When we worry, we're doing nothing but stewing and not doing. It's kind of like I wish I had a rocking chair in here right now. You can sit in a rocking chair and you can rock all day long and you can put all kind of motion and you can put all kind of energy into it, but you ain't went nowhere, honey. You're still sitting in the same place that you were. And worry is nothing but the same thing. Worry is us putting emotional energy into something and we ain't going nowhere. We think we're really doing something, but we're not. It's doing something to us. Thank you, Lord. God, help us not to worry. Help us not to worry. The birds don't, and birds are beautiful in their song and in their appearance. And God is saying, look at the birds. They ain't worried, and you shouldn't be worried either. God is saying, look at the birds. I take care of them, and I'll also take care of you. How much more do you think God will take care of his children? Much more than he does the birds that are flying through the air. Look at verse number 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. I want to let somebody know this morning, anywhere you go out in the field, well, that thing about went bye-bye. You can go out in the field, and you can see the flowers out there, and wildflowers, they are beautiful. They are magnificent. They're, hallelujah, they're just beautiful. And they don't have to get up and do their makeup. They don't have to get up and get all fancy. You know what? The wildflowers, they don't worry about their appearance. They don't worry about how they appear before everyone else. All they do is be who they are. And I want to tell somebody that's listening right now, during these times, it's so easy to try to be something that you're not. And God is saying, you don't have to worry. You don't have to try to become a doctor. That's what I was telling you a while ago. Everybody's Googling how to, how to overcome, how to cure this stuff. You just be who you are and who God created you. God said, look at the flowers of the field. They are beautiful just the way they are. God created you not to try to be somebody else, but to be who you are and to trust in him. We're talking about animals right now. Listen, dogs. Have you ever seen a dog jump up on its back legs and start worshiping and saying, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You're good. If you do, I'd like to see that. I would like to see that. But dogs don't worship because it's not in dogs' nature to worship. But we, as human beings, we were created in the image of God. We were created in His image. Therefore, we are created with the ability to trust Him and to love Him and to worship Him. I want you to know that God cares for His children. I want you to know today that God is not going to leave you without help. He said, I'll never leave you and I will never forsake you. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what verse 26 says right there. It said, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor they reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father. Notice that with me. Your heavenly Father. Not the bird's Father. He's not the Father of birds. He's the Father of His children. And God loves you today. And just as I said earlier, we have special privileges, privileges that others don't see. Worry is unnatural. Worry is unreasonable. Number three, worry is unhelpful. Worry is unhelpful. What does this mean? It means that it's useless. It's worthless. Worry is worthless. Nothing changes when we worry. Look at verse 6, 27. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Which one of you? Can I tell you something? Worry don't add nothing to you. It don't add nothing to your situation but bad health problems. That's the only thing worry will bring your way. Thank you, Jesus. Worrying will shorten your lives and make you miserable. And I want to tell you this. Worry cannot change your past. 
A lot of people worry about what happened in their past. Listen, that's what it is. The past is the past. Worry cannot change your past. Worry cannot control your future. People worry about what I'm going to do tomorrow. How I'm going to get there. What's going to happen next. Worry cannot control your future. And so if worry can't control your past or can't change your past and worry can't control your future, what does it do? It messes up your present. It ruins the day in which you live. And it drains the strength out of your body. You don't believe me? Take Proverbs 12, 25. This is what it said. An anxious heart, a worried heart, weighs a man down. My goodness. I know we, have, we live in a land and we live in a nation of worry. But we don't have to. We don't have to. We can trust in God. Worry will weigh you down. I'm almost done today. Worry will weigh you down. And when we start to worry about something, then we begin to get discouraged. After we get discouraged, then we start to get depressed. And after we get depressed, then we start living in despair. And if you'll remember what we preached about last week, if the church is listening, we preached last week, whom the Son set free is surely free indeed. And God set us free from living in despair. God called us not to be depressed, not to be stressed, but to live a happy, productive, stress-free, worry-free life in Him. Because God, Loves his children. God don't want you to live that way. God does not want you to live that way. Every time we worry or we wallow in it, listen, our bodies are not designed to worry. Every time we worry and wallow in it, this is, as I said, your body takes score. Your body will keep a score. You've heard people say, I'm worried sick. You're right. You are. You're worrying yourself sick. It's an actual thing. Scientists have proven when you worry all the time, it stresses you out and it's taking minutes off of your life. Why are we worrying when our God said, worry about nothing but pray about everything? Yes. Pray about everything. Worry causes more fatigue than work. Let me tell you what I'm talking about right there. Worry causes more fatigue than work. A, a man that works, you can go and work all day long. Or a woman that works, you can go and work all day long and put in a hard day's work. When you get home, you get a shower and get you something to eat. And you lay down and your sleep will be peaceful. But you let somebody go to work and worry all day. And come home worrying. Driving in the car to the house worrying. When they get home in the shower, they're worrying. When they sit down to eat, they're worrying. And you know what happens when they go to bed at night? They don't get no sleep. Because they're still worrying. Stress and worry causes more fatigue than work. It's not good for your body. It's not good, church. Proverbs 14, verse 30. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. You want to get healthier? Then stop worrying. Number four, worry is unnecessary. I only got one more after this. Number four, worry is unnecessary. When I was growing up, I'll never forget it. When I was growing up, I knew if I ever had a need, all I had to do was go to my dad. Mm. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord Jesus. All I had to do was go to him. And I trusted him. All he had to do was say yes or no. And I trusted him to supply whatever I needed. You see, when I went to my dad, I left it at his feet. I left it with him. I didn't bring it upon myself as a child to worry about how my dad was going to do it. I didn't worry that I wasn't going to get what I asked for. I didn't worry that I didn't, wasn't going to get or how, how daddy was going to do it. I just knew that he would do it. In church, when we begin to worry, we are taking on a responsibility that God never intended for you to have. 
You see, God don't want you worrying about how he's going to do it. He just wants you to trust that he will do it. When I was a kid, I don't worry. I didn't worry. I said, my dad, he'll do it. He'll make a way. In church, what does the Bible say? I wish every one of you were here to answer that question. It says God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will make a way where there seems to be Amen. no way. God never intended us for us to worry. Every time we worry, it's like a warning. It's like I'm playing God. I'm acting like God. I'm thinking it all depends on me. If I don't do something, this whole thing's going to go into chaos. It's going crazy. Listen, God's our Father. We must trust Him. We don't need to play God. And when we worry, that's what we're doing. Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field... What today, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown to the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? God takes care of the flowers, and they're only temporary. God takes care of the flowers, and they're here today and gone tomorrow. They're only temporary. The first cold patch that comes through kills them out. All oh, There's all kinds of stuff. They pop up today, gone tomorrow. And the Bible said God takes care of the flowers. Will he not much more take care of you who are eternal? Amen. You are of much more value than a flower. Mm, you are of much more value. How much value do you have? Just look back at the cross. How much value do you have? God didn't die for a dog. God didn't die for a cat. God didn't die for a horse. He died for his children. You have value. And he died to save your soul. You're not worthless. You're not junk. You are God's special. The apple of his eye. His chosen. You are the one who was made in the image and likeness of God. You need to remember who you are. And remember whose you are. And don't worry, we're not junk, we're not worthless, we're God's children, and God is certainly good to us all. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Yes. Warning, worry is a warning sign. It's a light that's flashing and beeping. It should be flashing and beeping. That's trying to tell us that we're forgetting to how God is so good to us. When we worry, we're forgetting how good God is. And that God's promises, he promises to take care of us. Many of us as Christians, we forget that we trusted in God to forgive us of our sin. We forget that God has already forgiven us and he's already washed all of our sin away. He's already washed us and cleansed us by his blood. And he has saved us from eternity. And so if God can save us from eternity, then shouldn't we believe him in the small matters? You see, God's already saved us and give us eternal life. How much more should we believe him in times like this? How much more should we believe him in these little things? This is just a virus that escaped from China. This is not something that you have to just lay down and die. This is a time to stand up and fight and pray the prayer of faith and watch what God will do. Worry, the last one right here. Worry is unbelief. This is the last point. Worry is unbelief. Worry is doubting God. Did you know that? Worry is doubting God. Because in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, the apostle Paul wrote these words, And I trust that my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. And when we worry, we're doubting God because God's already told you he'd supply every need that you have. In the scripture here, the Bible says, look right here what he says. He says that your father knows everything that you need. How many times have we questioned God that, God, you really don't know what we need? God says, I know everything you need. I keep score. I'm watching. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are upon you. He knows what you need. Thank you, Lord. Many of us are not trusting God for what we need. The starting point is a humble heart. The starting point is a humble heart that says, God is God and I'm not. 
This is where we start at. God is God, and I'm not. God is in control of every situation. I have nothing to do with it. All I do is talk to God, and I pray to God, and he's the one that moves. He's the one that answers. He's the one that will turn this around. But all I'm doing is trusting. God is God. And they used to sing that song, God is always God. He don't need nobody else. I wish I had a witness this morning that would say, I know God. He don't need my help. I know God. He don't, God, he he don't need, need my, my help. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God is God. He don't need no help from us to be God. And when we finally understand that worry, church, will begin to drain out of our lives. When we finally understand that it don't matter what we do. Remember what I told you at the beginning of the sermon? You can either pray or you can panic or you can either worry or you can worship. I'm choosing to pray. I'm choosing to worship. I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to pray and I'm going to let the peace of God surpass all understanding. Yes. I'm going to let my worry go down the drain. I hope you do too today. Yes. Your Heavenly Father knows what you need. How many times have we acted like you don't know? When we worry, we're acting like an atheist. Listen to me now. This may be a hard pill to swallow. I'm going to move this out of my way. When we worry, we're acting like an atheist. You say, Brother Chad, that's hard. We're acting like there's no God. Amen. He said, I'll supply all your needs. And he's told us he's going to do it. And he's told us that he can do it. He will do it. And then when we worry, we're believing that he can't do it. We're believing there ain't no God to do it. Like there is no God, worry is practical atheism. Worry is practical atheism. We really don't believe that God can get us out of this mess. I want to tell you something today. God can and God will and God is. Amen. God can, God will, and God is. Praise the Lord. When we start depending, thank you, Lord. When we start depending on ourselves trying to figure this all out rather than just resting in God and trusting in God and, and believing Him do what He said He is, that's called playing God. Listen, you don't need to figure all this out. You don't need to sit here and whine and pine about it and stress yourself out. You can't do nothing about it. Keep your hands clean. Don't touch your face. If you stick, stay at home. Don't go buy up all toilet paper so everybody else can have some. But you can't do nothing about the disease. But God can. Give it to God. Amen. Give it to God. Don't play God. That's a poor testimony. And if we claim, I'm closing with this, if we claim to be followers of Jesus Christ and our worries, we worry all the time. That's a lousy witness to the world. Yeah. If we claim to be followers of Jesus Christ and we worry all the time, that's a lousy testimony and witness to the world. They don't want to worry. They think that we serve a God that's able yeah. to supply all of our needs. We should show the world that he is and quit worrying one day at a time, sweet Jesus. One day at a time. Don't worry about the future until we can successfully manage today. Hallelujah. We all need to step across that line of doubt and unbelief and worry. And we need to cling to Jesus through this storm. We need to cling to Jesus through this storm. We need to get rid of all doubt, all fear, and all unbelief. I believe, hallelujah, that this church at Prospect, all the people that comes here, and I believe surrounding churches as well, I believe they know God. And I believe you know God. Amen. And I believe you know that God's able. And I pray you are not one of those that worry. But if there's somebody that does watch this video and you are worrying and you're fearful, listen, you don't have to be. God is able to take that away from you. He is able to come into your heart and change you and turn you around for the better. He's able to come in and he's able, hallelujah, he's able to give you peace, yes, he is. power, love, and a sound mind. And you don't have to worry about your future because you know who holds your future. Romans 10, 9 and 10, I'm going to say it again. If we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, Hallelujah, the Bible says you shall be saved. In 1 John, the Bible said that if we would confess our sins before God, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
I want you to know it's as easy as calling on him. Today, that's all you have to do. If you need help, if you need Jesus, if you need a Savior, listen, he says, call on me and I will answer you. He's not waiting to beat you up. He's waiting to wrap his arms around you. He's waiting to call you son and waiting to call you daughter. You don't have to fear this pandemic, this virus that's going around, but you can trust with us that Jesus Christ is in control. Amen. He's coming soon. The Bible said that when we see these things taking place, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 13, it says these words, when I hold back the rain and when I send locusts out upon the earth, and then it goes a step forward, when I send a pandemic out into the world, Jesus is letting us know, listen, you want to know what's happened over in Australia right now? It ain't rained in so long that the wildfires, I'm sure you've heard about them, the wildfires are eating everything up. There's locusts in, in Africa and Kenya right now. 200 million, listen, are swarming in Kenya right now, eating up all the wild crops, eating up all the crops and everything. And now there's pestilence, not just in the United States, but in the world. And you say, why would a loving God allow that to happen? Because he loves you that much. You say, I don't understand that, Brother Chad. Well, let me put it this way. The Bible says in 2 Peter that he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Yes. He's trying to get our attention. Amen. God is trying to wake us up that we'll call on him. And he's given us every answer in God's word. Everything that we see that's taking place right now is all written in God's word. Amen. Jesus Christ told John, he said, Behold, I foretold you all things. There's nothing he left out. There's nothing God's trying to hide from us. But God's trying to get our attention because the trumpet is about to sound. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Yes, and I hope you. you're ready. All you have to do is accept him, believe in him, confess him, and he will become Lord of your life. Yes. I want to pray now with you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, God, if there's anybody watching this video right now who don't know you, God, that they would call out on your name. Lord, all they have to do is say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know I need a Savior. I know I need Lord, make you Lord over my life. I believe that you died for me, Lord God, and rose again. And Lord, you died for me, so I want to live for you. Would you come in, Lord, and be my Lord and Savior? Lord God, will you take away all my doubts and all my fears? Lord, and help me to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If 